Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And today we're going to go into Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. As we went into last time in the 35th chapter, it was really um, a prophecy against Edom. All right, you saw Edom and how the Lord was going to bring judgment upon him. But uh, as we read in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, what you see in the subheading here is the mountains of Israel to be blessed. Okay, and pretty much the Lord is telling Ezekiel to prophesy against the mountains of Israel now. You know, the Lord uh, really speaks about how he's going to turn things around, okay, and, you know, cause the land to flourish again from its desolate state and also bring, you know, the uh, true Israelites back to the land, you know, and bless us. So let's go into it. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 1. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, ye mountains of Israel, Hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because the enemy hath, it, hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. And um, the enemy is really dealing with these heathen nations, but the number one enemy is who? Esau, Edom. Okay, and why were they able to say that? Because we weren't in the land anymore. Okay, due to our transgressions, we had been taken out. And so they went up in there and, and made it their possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Because ye have made you desolate, or because they have made you desolate, and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. Right, so... Because we were, you know, the, like we were made desolate, right? We were taken captive. We were kicked out of the land, so to speak, right? And these these heathens came up in there. Like if you look at the land today, we're not. I mean, the true the true Israelites are not in there. But it's not even just like one nation of of of, of a heathen that's in there. You have you know Ishmaelites, and so like they're all vying and fighting for that land. Okay. But as it says here, ye are, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers. So you're basically the subject matter, you know, of uh, talkers, meaning they're talking smack, right? And, and are an infamy of the people. So, you know, when they talk about the, the, the land, I mean, in, at least in the context of Ezekiel 36, the Lord is saying here that you're being talked down upon. Okay. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. Thus, Say if the Lord Yahweh to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. So they basically took advantage of it by right? the fact that we weren't there anymore. They went up in there and they did this back then. All right. During this time, but more prevalent now, because now we've been we've been totally removed from the land. Right. You still have remnants of our people, but, you know, in, on a large scale, we're not there. Verse five, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, surely in the fire of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which Idumia is the, um, is, is talking about Esau, Edom. Okay. Idumia, I think that's the Greek way of, uh, Edom, of saying Edom, or just another way of saying Edom. Let's, let's type that in here and let's see. Yep, I do me up. Now here it says uh, Adam, but it, it really in the Hebrew should be Adawam, okay, which is red. But as you can see, Edomite, Idumian, descendant of Esau, okay. So the Lord is saying here that in the fire of his jealousy, right, in his anger, he has spoken against the residue of the heathen, but especially against the Edomites which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. And an example of this, of them appointing the land into their possession is 
what's known as the Balfour Declaration, which was an actual dec official declaration of them. You know, let me actually just pull it up here. Balfour Declaration. And we'll just read this first part right here. The Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War, announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the Ish people in Palestine, then an, uh, then an Ottoman region with a small minority Ish population. The declaration was contained in a letter dated 2nd November 1917 from the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur, or Arthur Balfour to Lord Rothschild. Isn't that interesting, huh? Uh, we, know, we know what they're about. A leader of the British-ish community for transmission to the Zionist Federation of Great Britain and Ireland. The text of the declaration was published in the press on November 9th, 1917. Okay, so you can read more about this and the details of it, but this is this is an example, okay, of them at what they call a national home. That land is not their home, <laughs> okay, because that land is actually uh, the Lord had already given that land to the the the, the descendants of of um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, okay. So they appointed that into their possession, like it says, with the joy of all their heart and with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So they took it, you know, they, they took that land as spoil and now they're defiling it. And that's why there's so much tension and, 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 and wars and, you know, stuff going on over there. Verse six, prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Now the word born like that with an E at the end means to carry or to bear. So the, the, the land has what? They, they've borne or they've carried the shame of the heathen. Okay, and it's going to go into some examples of that. Okay, but one example is like, you know, like when you when you when you look at how the land of Israel used to be versus how it is, you know, post uh, that time, you know, these these nations round about the shame is them talking, you know, bad about it. OK, therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are round about you, they shall bear their shame. So the Lord is saying, basically, he's going to he's going to cause them to have shame to endure themselves. OK, as they're over here, you know, <laughs> uh, talking shit. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. All right. So now we're in that time. And, and this is prophetic, by the way, and, and, and you're going to see why in a few verses. But the Lord is saying they are at hand to come, meaning that we're not there. But when when these prophecies get fulfilled, a part of that is the Lord sending his son back to deliver us and to gather us from the regions we've been scattered within and to bring us back to that land. OK, so the Lord is saying, you know, basically, because remember, that's his favorite land. Right. But basically, don't worry about it anymore, because, you know, I'm going to cause you to flourish again. And, 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 and to serve my people, Israel, which I'm going to bring very soon. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. Right? Meaning, you know, tilled and sown, meaning planted, you know, and so on and so forth. Your land is, people are going to plant, they're going to reap. It's going to it's gonna be lively again. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. So this is how you know it's prophetic, right? Because we know that historically speaking, the we were in the land, right? The nation of Israel was in the land. We hadn't been taken out after coming out, after being delivered from Egypt and taken to the land of Canaan, which later became known as the land of Israel, because the Lord had blessed us with it. We stayed there, right? We dwelt there all the way up until um, King David, you know, King Saul, then King David, then King Solomon, 
And after King Solomon's reign, the kingdom was divided to where you had the kingdom of Judah, which was otherwise known as the southern kingdom. And then you had the kingdom of Israel, which was known as the northern kingdom, you know, respectively, because if you look at the lands, you know, Judah was south and Israel was north. But anyway, um, you had the southern and the northern kingdom. But later on, when the Assyrians came up, they ended up deporting taking out the northern kingdom into captivity and then after that the northern kingdom the bulk of them came to the americas but they're a part of the house of israel okay so after that time yes the southern kingdom got taken captive into babylon you know and then they got brought back to the land and then you know so on and so forth we were under the greeks the persians all of that but all of the house of israel was never brought back to the land because the Northern Kingdom came here to the Americas and they've been here since. So we know that this isn't talking about some time in the past because that never happened. After the split, after we were taken out, the Lord, like we were not brought as a whole, the whole house of Israel back to the land. That's gonna happen or starting when the when Yahweh Shai comes back and gathers, okay, the elect of the house of Israel and through them, the rest of the nation is gonna be brought back. But that is when all the house of Israel, even all of it, is, are going to be multiplied upon the land. And the cities shall be inhabited and the wastes shall be builded. Right, because, and, and who's going to build it? It's sure, certainly it's not going to be us. <laughs> okay, it's going to be, well, let's, let's get a quick precept on that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 10. The sons and the sons of strangers, strangers being the heathens, the other nations, shall build up thy walls and their kings shall minister, meaning to serve, unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So now the question then, that begs the question, why are they gonna need to build? Okay, well as it says here, the cities, the, the wastes, because what's gonna happen? When you read prior to us going into the land, that land is gonna be destroyed, to be cleansed. And that's, that's going to happen during World War III, pertaining to Ezekiel the 38th chapter, as well as other precepts. So once that after that destruction, when the place is made desolate, it's going to need to be cleansed. And well, it's going to be first be cleansed by fire, but the dead bodies and all that, it's going to need to be cleaned up and build it back up. And you, you, you must be out your mind if you think we're going to physically be lifting up rocks and doing all of that. Like I just read in Isaiah 60. These other nations, which are going to be ser uh, uh, servants under us and captives, they're the ones who are going to be doing that. Okay, but the point here is that the Lord is saying he's going to bring that, the nation of Israel back, multiply us upon the land. The city is going to be inhabited and everything is going to be built back up. And I will multiply upon you, man and beast. And they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates and will do better unto you than at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. So when all when all this comes to pass, it's going to be there's going to be no doubt about it that this is the working of the divine power Yahweh by Shem Shai. But also, you know, when the Lord delivers us, we're going to get our land back and you know, the various tribes are going to get their various, you know, regions just like the time of old when we were in the land and we were, you know, we had the, the blessings and all of that. But the Lord is saying this time is going to be even better than that time, better than that, the beginnings. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel. Not everybody, but my people Israel. And they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Right, and the land is going to be our inheritance because rightfully so. The Lord promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the, the descendants. So, of course, as it says here, we're going to get it back. And thou shalt no more hence bereave them of men, meaning that we're, we're going to, our habitation is going to be sure. We're not going to suffer loss while being in that land. Verse 13, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because they say unto you, thou land devourest of men and has bereaved thy nations so the, the the you know remember like we read up above about the land bearing the the shame of the of the heathen 
it's kind of like them saying like, damn, that's like the, they're talking bad about the land because of the things that transpired there, you know, i.e. us, like it says here, the land devours of men and bereaves thy nations. We, we suffered, you know, different famines, calamities, cap, you know, we were taken out of the land. Like there was a lot of stuff, you know, negative things that happened to us there. Okay. But the Lord is saying here uh, in verse 14, therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations anymore. Thy nations is talking about Israelites, saith the Lord Yahweh. So no more are, you know, the, there's going to be no more cause for these nations to be able to you know, talk down on the, on the, you know, on the Lord's chosen land to say, damn, that place is a curse. Like, look at what happens to all those people that, that uh, dwell there, you know? So the Lord is going to cause all that to cease because instead of us undergoing curses and sufferings and desolations and destructions, we're going to be undergoing blessings. Verse 15, neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen anymore. So, when we're put back in the land, we're not going to hear the shame of the heathen. They're not going to have any anything negative to say. Why? Because we're going to be we're going to be divine. The land is going to be flourishing. OK, and everything is just going to be perfect. Neither shall thou bear the reproach of the people anymore. Neither shall thou cause nations to fall anymore, save the Lord Yahweh. So once again, basically, when we're put in that land, we're not going to suffer famines or loss or any of those things it's going to be you know it's going to be like the land of milk and honey moreover the word of the lord yahweh came on to me saying son of man when the house of israel dwelt in their own land they defiled it by their own way and by their doings their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman and then a, a removed woman an example would be a woman on her menstrual cycle right according to the law she used to be separated you know put aside because she's unclean and the lord is, is is making that comparison here to say the 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 way that israel behaved themselves in this land with their wicked ways it was it was you know it was it was likened to me as like you know a woman that's on her menstrual cycle meaning i, I wanted them out of my sight Verse 18, wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, right? Because of all the unrighteous dealings, the murders, the sacrifices they were doing, right? And for their idols, wherewith they had polluted it. And, that, and, and I mean, we've read numerous chapters, even in, in Ezekiel, just the book of Ezekiel alone, that, that highlight this behavior that the Lord was referring to here, that Israel did wherewith they polluted the land, the temple as well. Verse 19, and I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them, right? So had we remained righteous and, and followed the ways of the Lord, we wouldn't have suffered the things that we did. But because of the murders, the, uh, the idol worship, the wickedness, the, the breaking of the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, he judged us accordingly. Verse 20, And when they entered in onto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. And how so? Because we bear the name of the Lord. So whatever we do as a nation reflects on the Lord, because his name is within us. Similarly, when you have a child, their behavior reflects on you. How people, when people see a, uh, the way a child is behaved, most of the time, they think of the parents. If your child is very well behaved, well mannered, they say, wow, the parents did a good job. If your child is a, a menace and a rebel, they say, damn, does he not have parents? You know, do they not discipline him? What kind of parents would raise a child like that? So it always, it, it reflects back on the parent. So the Lord is saying here, when you went, went among these heathens, you didn't represent me in a good way. You profaned my holy name because of your, your wicked and defiled ways. And when it was said to the people, yeah, these are the people of the Lord. They said, what? These, look at what they're doing. You know, 
They're like they're like the worst nation out of all of them. And these are the people of the Lord that doesn't speak well of the Lord's name. Verse 21, but I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen whither they went. So the Lord said, look, <laughs> I can't just let my name get, you know, messed up like this. I can't have my reputation be tarnished like this because of your, you know, your, your, uh, uh perverse behavior. Verse 22, and as you can see, right, Israel to be renewed for his namesake. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy namesake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. So the Lord is saying, what I'm about to do is not for you per se, okay, but primarily it's for my namesake, because if I don't do this, you're just going to continue to to you know drag my name through you know the it's just gonna it's not gonna be good so what's the what did the lord decide to do verse 23 and i will sanctify my great name which was profane among the heathen and how is the lord gonna do that by sanctifying us okay because when the lord establishes israel again in that high position in that that top position as gods on the earth holy clean righteous people are gonna look to the matter of fact, um, uh, there's a precept about this. <sighs> Man, see your and bless. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can find this. Uh, let's look it up in Google. May see your works and bless the the Lord. Yeah, I think this is Matthew 5 and 16. Let's take a look. There you go. This is Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's the point right there. So when, when the Lord establishes us in a good light, People are going to glorify the Lord. The world is going to glorify the Lord because they're going to look at us and say, damn, look at these. These are the Lord's chosen people. I mean, that 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 reflects well on the Lord. Like this must be a real magnificent God. I mean, look at his people. Right. So we're like a reflection of the Lord. Hence, for his namesake, for his glory, he is going to sanctify us. OK, and by doing so, his name is going to be sanctified. Uh, where are we at? Verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh, saith the Lord Yahweh, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So when the Lord delivers us and he sets us up in the high place, in the clean, you know, in the top place, the world is going to see that how we went from rags to riches. You know, at, at just like that, like we were actually delivered and raised up and it's going to bring glory to the name of the Lord. The one true living God. Verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Why? Because we were scattered into the, the different nations among the heathen. So the Lord is going to deliver us, starting with the elect from all those different areas, gather us, bring us together. Right. And take us into our own land, which is the land of Israel. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And that the sprinkling of the clean water is metaphorical. But what the Lord is saying here is verse 26 is going to explain how he's going to do it. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to take you from I'm going to gather you and clean you up. OK, and and, and, and make you pure again. So the filthiness are the iniquity, the wickedness, the idol worship, all of those things make us filthy. So the Lord is going to cleanse that, cleanse us from that. Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. The word heart goes to the Hebrew word lab, which means your mind, right? So the Lord is saying here in the, in, in, in the sense of a new heart, meaning a fresh mind and a fresh spirit is the Lord going to put within us. One that is going to be pure. 
and this this is going to be this is a part of that that uh the new covenant okay that you can read of in hebrews and i believe also in the book of jeremiah and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you a heart of flesh now it, 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 it likens this onto like a stony heart and a fleshly heart because a stony heart is, is stubborn, it's hard, it's adamant. Okay, so it, it really, it can't really be conformed. You can't really mold a stone. Okay, but that of a fleshly heart, you know, is more, you know, moldable. Okay, and can be conformed to the laws of the Lord. So that fleshly heart that the Lord is going to give us is going to is going to be that that you know renewed spirit. To where we're going to be perfect and righteous and we're not going to you know be subject that's that's a part of that new spirit we're not going to be subject to wickedness anymore so we're going to be righteous all the time forever verse 27 and i will put my spirit within you right which is the holy spirit and will cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them and we're never going to deviate from them again and as long as we do that, we'll remain perfect. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. And starting with Abraham, right? The Lord told Abraham, go over here. You see all this land right here before you? I'm going to give this to you and your, you know, your descendants. But particularly Isaac, right? From Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, okay? I will also save you from all your uncleanness and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And how is the Lord going to save us from our uncleanness? Well, what makes us unclean? Sin. And when we sin, we die. So the way the Lord saves us from, from that is by, you know, putting a spirit in us to where we don't sin anymore and we can be clean and we can live forever. And I will call for the corn and will increase it, which is just a representation of, of um, you know, being plentiful, right? And lay no famine upon you. So we're not, and because famine is a, is, a, is a form of judgment the Lord brings, but not, we're not going to have to, and you know, go through that anymore. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. So we're no longer going to suffer these judgments, these various judgments to give the heathen a, uh, a chance to even speak bad about us. Ah, look, I thought they were the people of the Lord. Look at what they're going through. It serves them right. <laughs> Verse 31, then shall you remember your own evil ways. So all this is going to be happening in the kingdom, right? Because that's when all these blessings are going to come upon us. And we're going to be made perfect. But at the same time, as it says here, then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. And this is also referenced in Daniel, the 12th chapter in the second verse. Now, this is primarily going to be on the, you know, the what the, 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 the wicked of our people feel. Those that, that didn't repent on this side, okay, that get reborn in the kingdom. Because, yeah, I mean, even the elect have done wicked things, but we've, you know, willing we're a part of that number, we've turned to the Lord, repented, you know, and, and sought after the ways of the Lord. But in the kingdom, those that, that stayed in their wicked ways on this side, they're going to remember that. But what's going to be even worse is that they're going to be in a in a totally righteous state. When you're in a, in a complete righteous state, you detest wickedness that much more. It's, it's, it's that much more filthy to you, right? And when it's that much more filthy to you and you remember that this is what you were wholeheartedly into, so much so that even when the Lord sent prophets to warn you and to turn you from it, you, you, I mean, you, you'd rather kill them than to repent from those wicked ways. Remembering that is going to make you look at yourself, you know, like it says, you're going to loathe yourself because of all the things you did. Imagine you you being a sodomite on this side. Imagine you being a transformer on this side and, and being just arrogant and having those demons on you and embracing them and committing all these lewd and heinous acts. And then in the kingdom, when you're, you, you completely detest those things, you remember that you were wholeheartedly into those things. That's, that's going to, that's going to, 
you know, <laughs> that's not going to be a fun thing. Verse 32, for uh, not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord Yahweh, let it be known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. So the Lord is letting you know, like, look, I'm, I'm doing this first and foremost for my namesake. Okay. For you, I want you to, I want you to reflect on those things and, and be ashamed and confounded. And also so much so to the fact that even with all the wicked things you did, guess what? The Lord is still going to deliver you. And that's, you know, that, that it's like if somebody does you wrong, you know, and, and you repay them with kindness, you know, and it's just like that, that, hey, like the saying goes, kill them with kindness. But even with that, is it balanced? Verse 33, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, in the day that I shall have, I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the wastes shall be builded. Yeah, so the Lord is going to. He's going to deliver us. He's going to change us, make us clean and perfect. And he's going to cause us to dwell in the land that he gave to us. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Yeah, so at one point, the land that was desolate, broken down, destroyed, is going to be rebuilt to the point where it can be, you can, you know, plant, you can, you can, you can, you know, reap, you can, you know, work on it. In verse 35, and they shall say, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. So they're going to be in awe looking at the, the beauty of the kingdom. And to, and to, you know, think that at one point this place was heaps. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. You know, it's like when, when uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're called like house flippers <laughs> or, or, you know, when, when people that take like an abandoned, broken down building, and convert it into like this nice, luxury, beautiful mansion house looking thing. Kind of like that, right? To see like, yeah, this place is destroyed and all messed up. But now look at it. Verse 36. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that 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 was desolate. I, the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken it and I will do it. So after all is said and done, the whole world, there's going to be no doubt about it, no confusion. Who did this? Who, who's the author of the, all of this? And what his name is, which is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Verse 37, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. And this is in, in other words, this is just old English to say that in addition, I will also be inquired of this, this other request. I will grant this, which is. I will increase them with men like a flock. So the Lord is saying, yeah, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to bring you into the land. I'm going to make the land flourish. But in addition, I'm going to increase you. And it tells you that in Isaiah, either 60, 61 or 62, that um, a small, a small, you know, the small, it basically says a man will become like a nation, meaning that we're going to, we're going to populate. We're going to increase. Okay. Because now we're going to have you know, freedom, sovereignty, a land of our own, peace. Verse 38, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. So the Lord is going to take that, that land that's been taken over by the heathens right now. He's going to judge the heathens. He's going to cleanse that land. He's going to bring us back. He's going to rebuild it. He's going to make it flourish. And then he's going to populate that land with Israelites. Okay. Anyway, that's the end of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. And until next time, Shalom.